Welcome to This Commerce Life. We are an unscripted podcast dedicated to small businesses and entrepreneurs in the retail and consumer packaged goods space in Canada and the United States. I am Phil Chang, co-host and co-founder. And I'm Kenny Benucci, co-host and co-founder of This Commerce Life. Our love is the journey to retail and our passion is sharing that with you every week. Honestly, these are so quick to the record button. Who, me? Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's on a hair trigger. I don't know how to record. It's on a hair trigger. I wouldn't even know how to record. Record everything. That's that's, that's the default. Record Record everything. No, I didn't even know the button. Just record everything. You'd you'd be surprised all the things I've recorded you, Kenny. You know what? (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) First off, I won't remember I said it anyway. And if it's recorded, I'll just, yeah, that was me. Obviously, I said it. What do you want me to do? I can't take it back. Oh, man. Oh, man. How are you? God. God, you guys. Hi. How are you? Hi. You so Hi. Funny. We are. You're getting stock, man. You can't go do demos with empty holes in the shop. Yeah, what's that. the deal with that? Well, how do you do demos like that? What was the point? <laughs> you, you guys clearly didn't watch the whole reel. Didn't no, you didn't. see the last image? It was like full, perfect. That's right when I got there. Oh, you your attention. Your attention span is like that. Oh, it's less. That was good. That was, you, gave me, you gave me way more more credit than I deserved. You're very I was actually kind excited for, for you. I thought, wow, this is awesome. She actually sold out. So, um, yeah, the point of that post was that I was, um, you know, I'm really excited going into the summer that demos are open up again because I yeah, for sure. it's such a big difference for me. And um, I got there and it was a cluster. Okay, sorry, can I swear? It's a podcast, <gasps> do whatever you want. Did you swear? Okay. You should, <laughs> as yet. long as you're okay with it, it doesn't I'm about bother to. us. <laughs> Say whatever <laughs> you want. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Do what you want. Um, swearing is my favorite. Go ahead, light it up. Do swearing it. is our favorite. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's just way more impactful by swearing. Anyways, uh, it was a cluster fuck of, yeah. you saw it, right? Empty yeah. pints on their side. And so it was exciting to see that people were, the product was moving, but the promo was $5.99. The promo was supposed to be $2 for 10. So my whole post was, um, don't wait around for someone to do it. I, I read just, that part. I read where yeah, you went just, in and changed yeah. and, and the, some girl said, well, I would have cleaned them all. You said five ninety, dollars She said five ninety nine. dollars I would have cleaned them out. I said, no, it's two for 10 actually. Then she yes. really would have cleaned them out. Yeah. And um, two for 10, you know, I learned that from haagen Damn, you move product at two for 10. As long as, yeah, that yeah. Was, what store was that? That was? On the island, a super small store. I'm actually doing it in a couple stores on the island. So, what so you the got one it? you probably know is Country Grocer. I, was, I thought they looked like Country Grocer signs. I think what you got to understand with the two for 10s is like when Superstore does a two for 10, and when we used to do them at London, there was two for 10 or 5 99 each. So it forced the multiple. Yeah. Safeway yeah. and all them did two for tens, but if you bought one, you got it for $5. Yeah. Which I, I thought was so stupid because it's not two for 10. It's really four, four for 20 yeah. or five for 25 because it's irrelevant because it's $5 each. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Force people to buy some volume, right? Move some shit off the shelves. Okay. Well, that's what you're trying to do. I am going to write that down because I just learned something and I think it's only been 30 seconds. Well, that might be it, though. So, like, you might have, we might have just like, blown the whole did, podcast. You in the just first five like, minutes. I don't even think Kenny's head even fits in the camera frame anymore. Like, look at what <laughs> you just seriously? did. You're like, <laughs> why do you be like that? <laughs> don't, don't worry. I'm just Phil. telling people I'm on sure the multiples. I know how they work, too. and I hate that. I hate when people do multiples the way they do them. You should force volume. That's the whole point. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. No, no, it's like especially if you probably there. pay for the scan back too, right? You pay for scans. The, I'm assuming you you helped them dollar down a bit. Of course. Well, then you don't want to pay for every unit. Like if someone buys a single, I don't want to pay a scan. Yeah. No, I want to pay a scan when they rifle two through the till. Well, it's a smart way to get profit out of it too, right? Like it's good for the store. You know, two for ten or five ninety nine. So if you really only want one, at least we <laughs> at least we can make some money out of it, right? Exactly. Like. Yeah. Well, that's why I never understood the Safeway model. But anyway, that's what they do. It's, um, you know, in truth, being in being an ice cream, I, I, I've learned everything. I think a lot of people that enter CPG learn everything the first time, the, the hard way. 
and uh, people just don't shop frozen, right? So no. I, I interviewed, I engaged with a hundred customers in four stores over two days, mm-hmm. two out of a hundred had ever tried or heard of better with 2%. I have because a lot you know what of happens when you go to the set, but think of it, you got a lot of work and this is what we tell people. This is why I really am not a fan of frozen. Frozen, if you watch, now that you're in Frozen, watch, walk the pizza set. For example, if you do not see a sign, you will see full pizza. If you see a sign on it, a sales sign, it's empty. Yeah. Frozen vegetables, frozen fruits, ice cream, the same. You got it's one pain in ass competitor that Nestle owns, yeah. and yeah. they're on all the time. And if it's not them, it's Briars. Between the two of those pricks, it's hard for you because they get signage. So that people just go back and forth between the deal. It's hard. So, so I'll never forget this moment at Fresh Street in West Van. Um, really great. It's a nice store. Store, store manager there. Uh-huh. And I, unfortunately, I can't remember his name, but this was our, this was going into our very first summer. And he, he's like, okay, let's put you on an end cap. Let's put you on promo for June and, you know, Canada Day. And I'm like, okay, that's great. And he's like, so what, 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 promo were you willing to do and i was like i was like it's ice cream season it's the holiday yeah it's like prime okay. season like, why am i giving this shit away <laughs> i was like why would i be on promo yeah and he literally took my hand and walked me down the frozen aisle and he said look if you're not these people will be 100 percent." and he's like i'm giving you the first chance yeah and i looked at him and i just was like oh fuck this is the game this as is- stupid as that sounds because it yeah. is as a retailer, like you need to be moronic. And I was a retailer, so you got to be moronic to put ice cream on in the summer. You know why? I'm buying ice cream. Yeah. It just I'm needs not, to I'm be nice. Out. If, yeah. I mean, so, I just need a nice day. I'm buying the ice cream. Like uh, last, last Friday in Ontario, it was, uh, it was like 25 degrees. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and we'd, we'd been, We'd been out the night before and we bought some ice cream, right? And and I bought some frozen yogurt stuff that the kids like. And the kids were like hitting it hard going, dad, let's go just, is it on sale? Like, let's go back and get another box the next day. So we've got, we've got some extra. And we went back and the set was just decimated. Like it didn't matter, yeah. you know, like, cause it's, it's seasonal, right? It's, it's kind of like cough, cold season. Like why, why do you put cough syrup on sale in October when everybody's coughing? Like, what's wrong with you, right? All you got to do is put up a sign that says, hi, I'm here. <laughs> go, yeah, okay, I'm in. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, The problem is though, they you know, train people. Those frozen sets have trained people. Yeah. People know, like you just, you look for the hole, that's where you go. It's so also- That's why Hogan is always wiped out. It's also hard to merch though, right? Like like you, you've yeah. got the glass, right? So you've got the glare of the glass. If you've got, um, if you've got Condens- older fridge sets with a condensation yeah. in it, I it's hard to see anything, the door right? To look like, inside yeah, yeah, you can yeah, see yeah, through the yeah. glass. It yeah. just sit, stand there, and now the <laughs> glass is all fogged up, so the next person can't see shit. I mean, honestly, oh my god. Oh man, oh, that's good. Oh, so something oh, had to be done. Man. All, all things I wish I knew before I entered the space. Let me tell you, every day. You know what though? At the end of the day, you're in and you're doing. You're doing. This, yeah. Well, you're going to tell us in a second because we never really we talked a little bit about this the last time we did that mini podcast was the one supposed to be 15 minutes. I think we went long on that one. So tonight you get to just tell us that story. Like, you know, what, yeah. the heck, what, 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 why'd you do it? Like, where did it come from? You know, all the cool stuff. That was so, the purpose of this one. So that's a good segue. Um, a good. So we're with, with Lori Joyce um, and she does better with ice cream. Um, and we, we've heard her on a, a small short already. We did a, uh, we did a, a fast thought with with Lori um, that you can see on the YouTube channel, um, but um, we had we had a really good fifteen minutes with Lori last time, so we uh, wanted to bring her back. And it is ice cream season, so like cream? it's a really good time to hear why ice cream and then why better with ice cream. So, so Lori, floor is yours. Floor Tell is yours, us, baby. Light it up. Tell <laughs> us what is going on. Light it what up. is. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think you ever need an excuse to eat, to eat or talk about ice cream. Oh my really. God. We don't. Ice cream. <laughs> you know, it's no. just, you know, no. so I run three times a week and the reason I do it is so I can keep eating ice cream. Yeah. I don't really, I could care less about all the other desserts. Like I like dessert. I like eating like Kenny, but 
Um, I like but, I like ice cream. But uh, ice cream is like and for me, ice cream is not seasonal. It's no, no, frankly, no, I actually no, no. like it. I like it in the yeah, winter. Yeah. I like, all the I like, time. I, I don't want to change it. I don't like it in the summer as much. You know why? It's melt it melts too fast. I actually like it. No, I like a little it colder all the time. I, I I could eat ice cream all the all the time on an ice cream cone in a cup, like yeah, all with some extra whipped cream. Like you name it, it's just ice cream. Throw some I, cookies I, on in. it, so, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chocolate chips. Yeah, yeah. All over. Your it. mom's biscotti. Kalua. Kalua. Yeah, you can booze it up. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there are, there are so many reasons why I got into this. I'm going to try so to where'd you start this. before this though. Let's I, yeah. we got time. We've got let's, time. Let's go there. It's, it's yeah. I'm dying to know. So where'd you come from? Why this? But I want to get some back, back channels so we can understand or think to ourselves, why did she do this? Okay. Well, I'll take it back to 2002 when I launched okay. Cupcakes. Okay. So oh, okay. Cupcakes Bakery in Vancouver, Denman, that morphed into, I don't know, I think at, at, at the most, we had about 15 locations. So my best friend and I, wow. I both, are, both of us are from Victoria. And we were just typical girlfriends that were in our mid-20s and we were tired of working for other people. And we had been working in New York, literally at Ground Zero in the fall of 2001. And wow. Um, wow. right there because we were working for a Vancouver-based odor control product, which was a phenomenal product. It was super interesting. And I was sales, I guess, I guess you'd call it head of sales because I was the only salesperson there. It was a really, really small startup. You're VP of sales. <laughs> I was VP <laughs> of sales. And um, I just wanted to take Heather to this bakery that happened to also sell cupcakes. And this is before they were famous because being in New York and being in Ground Zero was such a you know sobering, for sure um feeling and i'm a big fan of new york so it was it was actually yeah. um it was a hard it was a hard thing for me to experience and i thought something like a cupcake would be a you know a nice refreshing change to the day and heather's claustrophobic so we go into magnolia bakery which now is literally on all the tourist stops uh, snl and everything uh sex in the city i mean it exploded but this was before then it's not right? as good now I'll just say. Oh, it's not. It's not the same owners. It's completely changed. It's gone. Quote, like the unquote. old Magnolia when okay. nobody knew it. It was yeah. so good. So the cupcakes good. were tucked in the corner. It was an afterthought. They did them because they had leftover cake batter. That's when we were in there. And Heather couldn't go inside because she's claustrophobic. And I, I came out with this box of four cupcakes, unmarked, like a white square box. And we take a cab and run our way to the hotel room. And I think by the third cupcake, I maybe remember to offer her one. Because I just... I, 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 Why, well, sure, I if you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. they were delicious. They were delicious. They were quintessentially the nostalgic, um, you know, culinary experience that you'd want in a cupcake they were um, kenny you've never had one of these i don't think so no. oh my god they're just no or not that i remember and I so i i work I for i work for revlon between 2000 and 2002 um so spent some time in new york and then later on even before they like when i was with j and j in 06 07 um they hadn't really Magnolia hadn't kind of made the popularity yet. So there's a long, there's a long, long list of trips into New York just to get ramen and cupcakes. And cupcakes from Magnolia. Like remember yeah. the, remember the velvet rope for the oh, lineup? God. It was God, exquisite. So good. So it good. was super, it was charming. It was so village, you know, yeah. downtown village yeah. and um, very understated, but, Heather's watching me eat, like devour these cupcakes. And I should maybe back this up a little bit. I grew up in an incredibly traditional Catholic Croatian household. My mom would labor over melt, like making by hand, like she'd pick the apples from our own tree. She'd make the phyllo pastry like tirelessly every fucking Sunday. Yep. And, and so I hated that stuff, not only because I had it, <laughs> but it, I didn't associate pleasure with it. There was it. no pleasure in watching someone sleep. No, no. I mean, this is nothing. It doesn't look good. It doesn't yeah. feel good. You got it. You know get exactly it. what I'm talking about. Totally. These like old European women, these nonas are like sweating totally. in their basements making these making these desserts. I I would swap my mom's very expensive 
homemade apple strudel for Rice Krispie Squares any day. Like, get me a fresh Rice Krispie Square or a Duncan Hines cupcake. I was so happy. That's funny. So, so I... Do you, uh, sorry, just one thing. So do you know the Asian version of that? My dad used to hand make dumplings. Oh, see, I, I would cherish that. So, so see, to me, I don't understand. To me, that would be no, crazy cool. But it crazy it cool. isn't crazy cool because it became a sweatshop, right? Because my dad, <laughs> you know, because imagine, you know, like we're the model of operational efficiency, right? So why the fuck would you make a hundred and enjoy yourself when you can make five hundred of them, right? Like, well, and then many, yelling at you know my father yelling at it, oh, that's too thick, and, oh, 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 you know. So by the time you're done, you're like, I don't want. You know what? I'm gonna go to bed. I I could give a fuck. Like, I I'm gonna stay hungry. I I don't ever want to eat another dumpling as long as I live. Like. It totally took the pleasure out of so, it. So the strudel story, it's my dumpling story. I, mm. I, I'm all in with you. I, I get it. Like, I if only we knew each other then, I'd trade you dumpling for a strudel. It'd be great. Like, oh, it would have been a really no great way, trade. There's no way at the age of that I was at that I was going to eat a, a, a dumpling. I had like, it was like European or all American. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That was kind of as broad as I would yeah. go. But yeah. yeah, I'd get my hand slapped if I stretched the dough too far. <laughs> Cut things wrong, put them in the wrong order. Right? Walk away to go to the bathroom or something that you had to do, like anything, right? So yeah. you can do this, don't you, Phil? You totally oh my God. You know, I had I had two other siblings, right? So so you you there was a careful balance because you wanted to make sure that you had equal amounts of production so nobody got picked on for being too slow. <laughs> <laughs> or god forbid that your strudel my dumpling should come out misshapen or <laughs> oh, <it's... laughs> oh no it was it was so stressful those memories nothing joyful about them at all it did probably uh, be delicious yeah. but that didn't matter i, I was <laughs> over it by the time it was baked i was totally over it <laughs> so, uh, so I, i'm can... sorry so please continue i'm dying now <laughs> So back to the cab ride and I have like icing all over my face and Heather just looks at me and she's like, this is what we should do. And I was like, what are you talking about? What, she's sit like, in the cab and eat cupcakes? We should open up a cupcake bakery. And I was like, out. I was like, Heather, we've never even worked in a Starbucks. Like, I don't know how to make cupcakes. Like neither one of us had ever worked in a food environment. Right. And, um, so I, you know, being a typical best friend, I just called her out, thought she was crazy. And um, six months later, we were going for a run on the seawall in the West End. And there was this big red and white sign, CB Richard Ellis for sale, right at 1116 Demon Street. I'll never forget it. Shannon Thornley, 604-662-3000. And, and I was like, that's the perfect location for a cupcake store. And she was like, what are you talking about? You... You, you, you totally made fun of me for that. And I was like, well, I, I always took a little bit longer. Like she was always very spontaneous right. with these ideas. And, and I was the, I was the one that just took time to really have things settle. And, you know, the next day we called Shannon, um, got a tour, I think in three months we were open. Um, that business morphed into a TV show called the cupcake girls. Don't, I don't expect you guys would know about that. You're mainly because you're not the demographic. No. Um, well, we don't look like familiar. cupcake girls. Like, what the hell? <laughs> I could be a cupcake girl if I want to be. I could be whatever I want. How's that? <laughs> okay. We're, we're, we're a very open show. Well, if I want to be a cupcake girl, I'm not going to be a cupcake girl. <laughs> I, I might just pee my pants. Okay. <laughs> so... You're at home. It doesn't matter to us. It's your sofa. It's your sofa. It's whatever you, you got to figure that part out. We don't care. So. <laughs> Maybe a three hour podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> Losers. I just can't look at you. Oh, I'm done. Honestly. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Phil I'm looking at cupcake has girls. Left, Phil has <laughs> left the room. I've left the building. Oh, Lori. <laughs> It's like I've known you all of my life. Well, <laughs> it's I amazing. Think, I, I think consciously, uh, we have, actually, yeah. I think. Uh, well, where where did you grow up in Toronto? In Toronto. Yeah. yeah. We were both stuck in basements <laughs> as children. That's I think I saw this. You know that. Uh, I had so, to go online. Now. I'm looking at it. I think I saw this. Oh, Cupcake Girls. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a, it was a, you guys, it was a big deal. It was like we won a Gemini Award. 
That's what really yeah, yeah. That's it was amazing. A, it was, that's awesome. W W Network, like ninety plus countries worldwide. Yeah. How um, crazy cool is that? Yeah, it was. A, it became this really. Crazy. Wait, wait. So you didn't lead with we won a Gemini award. <laughs> That's I funny. didn't think it was that. I, I didn't think it was that important, actually. <laughs> well, it makes for a good story. Yeah. We we uh, you know what's the good story <clears throat> is going to the Gemini Awards with my mom as my date because the man I was married to at the time fucking hated the show, hated it. What? Oh, hated it. So it was what like he- the beginning of the end of our marriage. Anyways, oh, yeah, I hated it. And um, Robert Hurjevich who at the yeah. time was a dragon on Dragon's Den is also Croatian. So naturally I walked up to him and I just started speaking Croatian to him. Mm. Um, and we, you know, this is before the award show started and we just were hanging out and he's with his daughter and I'm with my mom and the four of us are having this great time. And he had no idea who I was. And so when it was curtain call, I'm like, Hey, may, may the best men, men win. And he's like, what? what, what are you talking about? And I'm like, we're up against you in best new reality show and he was so humble and lovely and he was like what this is this is super cool and exciting and um so we were sitting of course at the very back and dragon's den was sitting at the very front so (laughs) we walked up to the stage to get the award he was he was standing there front row giving us eh? that's that's amazing it gets cooler um when we left the theater he was waiting for us in his car. And this is so embarrassing. This is so me growing up on a farm in Victoria. He had the most elegant, most beautiful, I guess, Rolls, Rolls yeah, Royce. Yeah, probably. Um, it's, there's a name for it. I think it's like Azure or something. It's like this blue, magnetic blue color. Anyways, okay. he had like, I'm, not, I'm talking like the driver with the white gloves. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like okay. the whole thing. And he <clears throat> ran out and he gave us all this big hug and... Uh, just so proud of us and so excited and I I innocently went to the car to say hello to his daughter because we'd been hanging out earlier and I had no idea how the door worked it's one of those ones where the door yeah because it opens the other way <laughs> yeah. yeah it was just like a total klutz move anyways he's that's such amazing a great guy he, he seems like a fantastic. really nice man he actually seems like a mm. really nice man well he, he actually grew up in a village near my mom in Croatia um very very you know, humble, very poor, right. very rural village. And uh, so we talked about that, you know. That's cool though, we right? How cool together. is that? And he was awesome. Yeah, he was really great. So that was my favorite part of uh, receiving the Gemini Award. And, you know, once, well, actually, um, no one really knows about this. The show well, they will was now, canceled. by the way. <laughs> yeah. The show got canceled because my husband would not tolerate, um, give permission to have the cameras come into our house. So season one, um, I had a really successful first try, thankfully, in vitro. So I told that whole story. That was season yeah, one, right. which I was told is why we won the Gemini Award. Um, Heather was pregnant season two, and then I got pregnant in season three. So naturally, because we're two best friends and we're running this business together and it's crazy, yeah. you know, they wanted to take the show into our personal lives and how we were adapting as, as moms and best friends and with the baby. Yep. And, and so Heather was really open to that. And so was her husband. And of course, they needed to balance that out and bring the camera into our house. And my husband was like, if I catch them in a block, like I'm calling the cops, like he's like, I want nothing to do with this. He wouldn't even let the show feature them on like the, the baby's face. On the really? show, right? Super, super private. I had to respect that. I couldn't, you know, I remember having that, remember having that important luncheon with the producer and he was like, well, this is what we're going to need for, to, you know, to get another season. And I was like sorry That's, i can't it's, do it it's not gonna happen and yeah. uh, he was like well you know what this means and I'm like, yeah i don't know i don't, I don't know what, well, what are you supposed to, to do i mean if, they, if they, you know there's a lot of you know i feel bad because you know it's the shitty way to end the show for you but yeah there's a lot of people that i, I know i know i know i know family and friends would, would not want cameras near their house same reason yeah i don't i wouldn't care like i'm like yeah. I, I don't really care if i was doing something like that okay that's part of it right but 
it's hard. It was, I mean, it's just, it was a know. tremendous opportunity for the business. It would have been um, killer, right? It would have been awesome. Yeah, we were go- like literally, we were, right. we were going like this, and um, and what do you do? Yeah, so it I was, guess if you did do what you did, you fixed, you took care of that marriage. Is what we sort of did. <laughs> Who knows what would happen? That there, there would have been a spinoff. That's what would have happened. <laughs> this could have gone on for years. <laughs> wow. So, well, what do you do? So um, as a result, you know, things changed pretty quickly um, because I pretty much took away that income from Heather. Right. And um, that was that was really, I think, hard for her to Mm -hmm. for anybody to to deal with. So her husband got this tremendous opportunity to work in Kansas City, and they originally thought that it was going to be temporary. But when they decided they weren't coming back, because they were actually, you know, that's amazing. I don't know if you know this about Kansas City or in middle America. They have this thing called, um, just wait, what's it called? Oh, yeah. Disposable income. We don't have it here. (laughs) Have you heard of it? I was from the Kootenays. Yeah, we had it there, too. So you're familiar with it? Yeah, it's a concept that you don't associate the lower mainland or any major city that that goes away. Yeah. Yeah. So, So there are parts in Kansas now and Missouri, where they're actually paying people to relocate to. Yeah. So you can get disposable income and Anymore. extra income. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have Just that. saying. <clears throat> you know what? I've been there a few times. It ain't that bad. No, it's not that terrible. No, it really isn't. Like- there, there are some really <laughs> nice parts. Yeah. There's some really no. nice parts. There's, there's some not so nice, nice parts. Part. There's nice parts everywhere. Yeah. No, there are There's some not so really nice parts. Well. Like there is there are parts that as an Asian guy I might worry a little yeah. If I were driving along, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, maybe a little less now than I did, you know, 10 or 15 years maybe, ago. But yeah, maybe yeah. not. Yeah. But yeah. But there are some really, really nice parts there. Oh, yeah. Where they're living, they're, they're doing much better there than if they were still living here. For sure. Oh, yeah. Disposable income. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and, you know, the convenience of direct flights <clears throat> to anywhere from there, right? Super yeah. accessible, affordable. I mean, it just, it, it just goes on. But, it's a game changer. Um, so because Heather was operations of Cupcakes and because we had been doing it together for so long, I really didn't feel comfortable or satisfied or excited to continue with the business without her. And that's where Better With started. So originally the name was created because cupcakes are better with ice cream. So this was my way of trying to do a line extension, something that was mine that didn't involve Heather, but could maybe add something to cupcakes. And ironically, well, for for so many reasons, I, I was learning everything as I was going. It just didn't, it just didn't work. It, we couldn't get it to work. And so because I felt I had made this amazing product and I was so proud of it because um, one thing I haven't talked about is that upbringing with my, <clears throat> excuse me, very traditional Croatian parents. They raised me on this absolutely beautiful, organic, self-sustaining farm. So my parents brought their farming traditions and information and knowledge that they had for, you know, I don't know how many generations. <clears throat> and when I, when my, when my two baby boys were starting to eat solids and I was a mom in the grocery aisle and I was starting to pay attention to ingredient labels for the first time, that's really where I felt betrayed as a customer. Um, being in the food business already, I thought that there was, I saw it as a huge opportunity to make something better and something that I really understood, right? Like to me, the way that we were eating and growing food and the way we were practicing responsible farming was so I was so aware um, and knowledgeable about it that I just thought, you know what, this is a, this is a product that right now I'd love to serve my kids. It's something that, you know, is much better than what's available because what I was reading was all these frozen dessert options that had, you know, so many ingredients, like the, you know, the ingredient deck was so long and and it just, it just was something that I got excited about. You know, I got excited about creating something that was better that, you know, I, today when I'm talking to customers, the easiest way to deliver it is like, we're the better version, better Canadian version of Haagen-Dazs. So Haagen-Dazs is a really great quality ice cream product, right. you know, and they deserve to be on that shelf. They have been for a long time. 
but I wanted to be the better Canadian version. And so because we make our flavors, um, we actually result in an ice cream product that does have less sugar. It does have less calories um, and it tastes more real because we're making it with real, well, so is haagen does, but there's just this, there's this real freshness about it. Okay, cool. And um, so that's, so that's where the name actually started. And, you know, and now I just evolve that into a, there's so many marketing opportunities with better with, right? Like life is better with ice cream. Everything is better with ice cream. The best is better with ice cream. You know, it just plays on so many oh, different that's cool. fun. So cool. is, this, is this like 2012, 2013 then when you get this idea for the ice cream? Like, or how far back? No, about, about 2014. Cause my youngest was so, so Lexi, my youngest um, loved strawberry ice cream. So he was probably three years old, three or four years okay. old. And um, we'd go, at, you know, into the fancy ice cream shops in Vancouver and, you know, like Ernest or right. uh, Rain or Shine. And he was that kid that just wanted strawberry ice cream. He didn't want strawberry and balsamic. You know how there was all these like yeah, just strawberry ice flavors. Cream. Yeah, yeah, just straight up. He just wanted strawberry. So I was that really embarrassing customer who had their three year old having a meltdown. Cause it was like strawberry or nothing. Like Lexi is non-compromising. I, and- I gotta tell you, I'm, I'm the same. Like if I'm trying a new ice cream, I strawberries, like, you know, if ice cream's good at the strawberry passes, do you know what I mean? Like, so I I'm the same. I, like, I, I don't want anyone screwing with my strawberry ice cream. Cause I, I like it. Cause it's and I'll know, I'll know if it. it's good. Right. Like I'll know yeah. it's the one like vanilla, to me, so I don't know if this is real or not, but to me, if you make a vanilla and you use fake vanilla, it's harder to tell if it's real or not. Like sometimes mm-hmm. you can tell from the vanilla bean, but it's harder because the perfumey taste doesn't come out right. But with strawberries, yeah. as soon as it hits your mouth, you know these are real or you guys use flavoring. Like I, yeah. you can just tell. Like it, it pops all different to me, right? So yeah, that's that's a yeah. really that's a really great analogy. So. So that was my test is making a natural, real strawberry ice cream that my three-year-old son would love that wasn't hot pink in color. And um, honestly, I think I nailed it. I think our strawberry ice cream is the best strawberry ice cream on the market. Um, I, it's like our number two, it's right behind vanilla with our, with our product, but I went from strawberry and um, you know, I, I sometimes, shy away from saying this, but I'm just going to be honest, which is my trademark. I don't like vanilla. I don't like vanilla anything. I've never, never been interested in anything vanilla. So selfishly, I made my own favorite flavor, which is cream. So we do vanilla and it's our number one, but I also launched cream because I felt that as a flavor, it held its own. And I get that. And the cream is really kind of speaks to me in my upbringing where right you know it it doesn't it, there's it's like frozen whipping cream it's a la mode right and you know in <clears throat> european in the european food everything is about simplicity so i wanted to make even though it didn't exist and um you know my co-packers were like you can't do this this is ridiculous and i was like well just wait wait till you try it and then they try it and they'd be like why aren't we doing this wow this is so good so cream, you know, and of course I'd like glare at them and be like, you signed an NDA. That's why you're not doing it. Um, that was, that was like co-packer meeting number one, but um, yeah, I, 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 I landed with cream. And then from there, it was about replicating the classic flavors, but better. Right. So my chocolate is, I specifically worked hard at re- getting the taste sensation of fudgicles from the 80s when they were like really creamy and depth so we added sea salt to our chocolate um to give it that depth so our chocolate ice cream i think we nailed the 80s fudgicle um coffee is the it's an arabica organic bean from brazil it's like a punch in the face it's like real coffee And then our caramel is, um, because I made this for my kids, it does have sea salt in it, but it's more for depth. It's not on the tongue. And so it just, it's, it's really nice. And, you know, our, our caramel, for example, is 50% less sugar 
than Haagen Dazs. So you you get this caramel flavor and this richness and this depth, but it's not too sweet. It's it's beautiful. Wow. So, so wait, let me let me let's back it up because now I'm not, I'm you're making me hungry again. So I'm, I'm trying to go into retail for a minute before I run down the street to a superstore and buy some ice cream. Is it in superstore? No. Where is it in Vancouver? Where am I going to be close to home? Save on? Nope. They won't return any of my phone calls. Where Where do you live? Like, I live in East, in East like, Van by the Italian Center. By oh, the close to Croatian Center. Yeah. Okay. Choices. Um, <clears throat> Nestor's, Buy Low, okay. um, Whole Foods, of course. Um, they were my first grocery partner. Thrifties. Um, Whole, Foods up, Whole Foods is up in Burnaby. I'll run up, I'll run up to Whole Foods. Yeah. So at the time though, so you came out with your first SKUs, strawberry. You, I'm assuming you came out with one or two SKUs before no, you- No, we launched with all six. All six. And you mm -hmm. launched on the island. I launched oh. at Here. CHFA. Yeah. And Whole Foods was my very first. That's- It's 2017. I thought Whole Foods major, like not your first retailer. Like first you're still retailer. Okay, so you went from no retailer to Whole Foods. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's. I, I was still thinking. Okay, there's got to be a couple shops on the island that had before Whole Foods. Wow. Okay. No, wow. we went. We launched. A so CHFA. you had nothing, no distribution, and you went to, to the CHFA show. I went to CHFA. In okay, so I don't know how much time you guys have for this interview. So. Wait, wait. So tell us how that went down, because like, like that is. Uh, not normal. It's not unless you're in the industry. Okay, now, if you've been in the industry for ten years, yeah, and this is your second or third brand, yeah, and you know people and you know some yeah, retailers, yeah, yeah. you can do yeah. you can do a show yeah. with no distribution, no problem. Yeah. I did it. I did this last one in essence with no distribution, but I know a lot of people in this industry. So you don't have, you know, it, 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 that I'm not getting it. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you the story. Let me yes. go. Light it up. Yes. I can't, I'm just so excited to meet you in person and, and bring you this. I didn't go to Vancouver last week, which is why you didn't hear from me. I had I just to, assume um, that. I had to cancel it because it was Lex's, um, my youngest son's uh, soccer tryouts and there's mm. nothing that comes in the it's way awesome. of that. No, so, no, it's kids first. It's first, um, we're the same. June 1st is when I'm back. For, that was the meeting with Mike. Right. Um, so 2016 spring CHFA, I launch. And as I'm setting up my demo, I have two different posters. One was about traceable dairy and one was about the flavors. So in that show, I had no idea if I was gonna be able to source my milk in time because this, is, this doesn't exist today. But at the time, what I was most excited about was being the first ice cream in the country to be made with single source dairy. But as the show was starting, I still didn't have the source. So I was super optimistic. So I chose the poster with the traceable dairy because it was truly, it was like, it was my passion. It was me paying homage to my dad. So yeah. my parents raised me with my own cow and I drank my entire childhood on pasteurized milk straight from the bucket. So obviously in retail, milk and everything's pasteurized today, but my, my ice cream is such a high fat content that, um, which is why I don't have any gums and fillers or stabilizers or anything like that. But the, you know, this isn't an ice cream company. The, the purpose of Better With is to, is so what, to disrupt the industry, right? It's about transparency. It's about accountability. It's about us working directly with farmers bringing the farmers to the table because we need to acknowledge and properly validate what they're doing. Not only does this create a better environment for the cows, but they can feed their family. And I was willing to pay a premium for that. So that's why I was doing this because to me, it wasn't enough to just be a better ice cream product, yeah. right? It was gonna be taking all of my upbringing on the farm and everything that I understood about that and making an ice cream that stood for something. So everyone loved the single source dairy. The buyers totally got it. They literally were like, is this coconut? And I was like, no. And they're like, and I'm like, it's full fat dairy. And they're like, oh, thank God. They loved it. I was like, this is 
full fat cream. And I'm proud of that because I believe the way I was raised is a, you don't get fat from real fat. And the only way you should eat ice cream is with rich, creamy, full fat cream, right? Just get over yourself. Eat ice cream the way it should be eaten, right? Eat like, food the way it should be eaten. We're, yeah. we're Chinese and Italian yeah. Croatians are, trust me. Yeah. yeah. We're all good with the fat. We're all there. It on. Yeah. I'm natural we're fats where it's at. It's all good. Yeah. So, yeah. so I was very nervous about the, the coconut, um, the plant-based. And so these buyers were like, oh my God, really? This is just real dairy? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. And so uh, Richard from Whole Foods yeah. was super excited and they wanted it by summer. And I ended up having to do what at the time I thought was like a really, really uh, risky email. And I emailed him saying, I don't have the source, the dairy farm yet. And I'm not going to make the summer market. And I don't want to launch until I have the single source dairy, you know, because my whole brand values is about transparency and honesty. And he responded saying, I don't care when you're going to get this milk, but we're going to be the first to buy it because of what you just said. He's like, I, I appreciate that honesty and vulnerability and you missing out on summer with ice cream because you cared so much about sourcing your ingredients. And you know why um, Richard's such a nice guy and why people like Richard. Yeah. He was like, that just made me want your ice cream more. Yeah. And I was very scared. Like you guys, this is my first CPG product. Oh no, we get it. No, but see, but I'm not even, but I guess what yeah, I'm, I'm trying it. to understand is that I, I'd be terrified too, but I don't think I would have been able to do a show knowing that I wasn't like, you know, you paid money to do a show, a CPG show, but you're not kind of, so you're telling me the story, but you don't, you don't have the, the sourcing yet. That's ballsy, right? Because people are there are ready to go. Like Richard's ready to buy. Oh yeah. Oh he's yeah. Like you guys, to... you guys, my pints were white blanks with photos, photocopied colored stickers. No, but the see, I'm, I'm okay with that. Are fine. I can do I'm that. okay with that. Like we, we've, you know, like we've all done, you? you know, no, 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 like baby. we've glued on our own labels. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you build your own, you build your own craft, but the sourcing I'm with Kenny, right. Is, that's is pretty, it's kind of like, nutsy. that's, you know, really, come on. You, you're not ready. Like, so I was telling Kenny today that one of my, the favorite phrases that my wife and I have, right, is, is, um, is, uh, is a phrase from a movie that we watched a long time ago, right? And, uh, um, like the movie Shakespeare in Love, there's one line mm -hmm. in there, right? It'll all work out. How? How will it work out? It's a mystery, right? And, and we laugh about that. We do that all the time where we talk about that one phrase, but this is probably one of those ones as you're like, you're gonna get. how, how is it? How is it going to turn? It's a mystery. Like, no, not this one. <laughs> like everything else in life is good, but not this one. Like, wow. The, you guys, I started cupcakes. I've never baked cupcakes in that store. Yeah. Like I still don't know how to make cupcakes. Right. Like, so it was, I always felt like you just pick up the phone and call and ask people and they'll figure it out for you. So the BC Milk Board, there was a um, guy there at the time, Woody, he was really great. And they were helping me logistically figure this out. Mm. But I underestimated how complicated the dairy pooling system is in this country. So yeah. I was learning everything the hard way. And so I had registered for CHFA well before, like, most people would think, how hard is it to source milk? You just go to the farm and you buy so some hard. milk. No, it's totally not like that at all. It is, <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it is beyond. It's like ridiculously so layered and complicated. And the government's involved on so many Oh my God, yeah. we've made milk and cheese brutally hard in this country. <clears throat> so my point was disrupting that, right? And so I had the BC Milk Board working with me to unravel this and make it simpler so that we can literally take the cost of the milk and give it back directly to the farmer. That was the point. I achieved that just six months later. I so guess that's we, still the part that stuns us. Mm -hmm. I love your thought. I love where you're going. I have no idea where yet you're at a show that's product ready in essence. That's the point of the show to pitch something that's not quite there because you can't get sort of the main ingredient. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, fundamentally that's like, you know, showing people I've got a really cool gas car. We just don't have gas for it. 
and we may not for a while. So look at the car. You could buy this. This car's wicked. You just can't run it. You know, it's it's, it's not it's right. not different I'm than busy. than the Polestar or the electric car demos that you see in the malls today, right? Because they're all in the same boat, which is like, yeah, we made the prototype. When can you get us a production vehicle? Soon. But even for Richard to stick around, <laughs> see, this is why Richard is well liked. That's Richard's amazing. Well-liked. But Richard, it's amazing. Like, I, yeah. I, think, I think I think that's crazy. He to be honest with you. You know, I think I had a lot of confidence because of what coming off the show. That really helped. Like for people, sure, people like that. That absolutely. Like within the first six months, we were in over two hundred and twenty-five stores. It's amazing. Of launching a frozen amazing. product. And when did you launch it? So you didn't launch in summer. You launched in winter now. So okay. we. So there's a photo of me. Uh, like literally taking the ice cream off the horizon truck and stocking the shelf at Whole Foods Park Royal the la- Friday night, the last Friday in November of 2016. And that was the beginning of the rainiest next five months in like since like the since the 40s. It was like the wow. longest, wettest winter we'd had for for decades. And I was given this opportunity to do this great um, demo. I'll never forget it. And I was like, can I bring champagne? Like, this is a big deal. This is a really big deal for me. Like, and uh, we just broke all the rules, right? They were like, yeah. just bring champagne, don't, just don't tell me you're going to open it. Yeah. yeah. And um, Whole Foods was 100% right behind me, right from the beginning. They loved it. And so we did launch with, with single source. In my ingredient deck, my very first, this is how obsessed I was about it. My very first ingredient, traceable cream. I got permission. And then guess what? I'd get emails because customers were like, why are you tracing me? Well, I, you know what? I would have looked at traceable cream thinking. I have no idea what the hell that means. So, yeah. okay. Is that good or bad? Or so is there a I microchip say, in here? Like, yeah. are she really tracing me? Like, what? Yeah. Farm but, fresh but, traceable cream would be written like a handful of places in bold. But, people- but I, I think to that point, though, I think the one thing, like even in CPG, where most of our listeners are, there's probably only a handful of CPG. Like anyone who's worked in dairy, like I, I, I'm lucky I, I worked at Danone, right? So I, I worked on yogurt. So I yeah, kind I of know. understand some of the dairy stuff. You know, Kenny, you just like you've, you've kind of been the concept, around the food but stuff. I've never yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've never, but, but I've it's single like, source is fine. I get it. I just traceable. don't, I just I don't think own. anyone appreciates really how difficult milk is. Like, we would, you know, we it really is it's incredibly we have difficult. Dairy. It's not milk. We've yeah. complicated dairy. Dairy. Anything that comes right. from dairy yeah. is a mass yeah. complication in this country because you got too much government in it. It's just yeah. too many boards and too much bullshit and too much bureaucrats. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You can't move. Yep. And little farmers have a problem getting screwed on that because the guys who make it are the guys like the Saputos that have 15 trillion cows or they've got people that they buy from and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little farmers, what are you going to do? Cancel unpasteurized still, yep. I don't think, right? I don't think that's really allowed. I mean, you can do it, but I don't know if it's, oh, like it's allowed, legal. allowed. No, 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 it's not It's not legal in Canada. Yes. Yeah, you know, I know people can do it if you have a farm. What are you gonna do? But do you know what I mean? Like, it's so complicated to do shit yeah. here in those, a few of those categories, dairy being one of them. Yeah. And so not only did you pick the stupidest set to be in, you picked the stupidest commodity to be with. That's okay, though. You've done well. Yeah. I, um, I did amazing, but wow. Yeah, that's 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 year one, you guys. That Shit. was... Um, and, and sadly, I couldn't raise a dollar for investment. So not knowing the business, not knowing the industry, um, we ran out of money really quickly. Um, definitely didn't have any money to properly educate what traceable was. Right. Um, I couldn't raise. So the traceable definitely impacted the margin. And I went into this business with my heart, right? This was more than a passion project. It was something I really understood, but you can't at that point have a good margin when your volume is so low. Right. So that brings me to today where I had to literally move back to Victoria, back to my parents' farm. And uh, it was the only way I was going to sustain the business. Um, one of the toughest, another tough decision, because I've been living in Vancouver for 25 years at that point. So it was, 
it was like, I can't believe I'm going to be in my mid forties and I'm going to move back in with my parents. Like, this is crazy. Like how embarrassing is that? And I just believe in my ice cream so much. And um, this is, I don't know if it's embarrassing. I think it's dedication on a farm. That's pretty yeah, freaking cool. It's dedication, right? Like I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think it's it. dedication. I don't think, so. I, I don't think that's and embarrassing I tell you the truth. Like, you know what, especially in old cultured families, that's not really, you know, I mean, there's a good, there's a, a million good spins on that. You go back, you help the folks out. They like to have you around. The grandchildren are there. You're close to the source. It keeps you grounded in your product. Like you don't leave really the farm aspect. I mean, I don't, yeah, it's, it's all good, man. What the hell? That's the reality now. But when I was contemplating the decision. That's a difference. Oh, yeah. That Tough. I can see because now you're it thinking, was, yeah, I must be a complete loser because I got to go back to mommy and daddy. Yeah. Right. Okay. But you can get over that pretty fast. <laughs> and this is right before like the world shut down. So um, I moved back home. I really felt that because I didn't have any money, maybe I needed to focus on just my backyard, you know, and it gave it, you know, I, I was trying to spin this as a very positive opportunity to focus on Vancouver Island. Mm. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, you guys are going to take me back to a time where, I mean, my sales were declining pretty quick. Um, I took, I took what I didn't like about cupcakes and I utilized and focused on my strength. So coming from cupcakes, I really felt that my key core strengths and what I loved was marketing. Operationally, I did not enjoy production. So right from the beginning, I, I wanted to partner with co-packers. I focused on you know, sourcing ingredients, creating this recipe and working with co-packers. So that's really great. And it's also how most of my category is done. But you also have to understand how big that game is, right? Like who's in that game and who, and how are they playing that game? So that was another part of the issue with cash is you have to have a certain amount of volume to be able to get these co-packers to make your product. So as we're declining in sales and I'm, I'm you know, it was, I'm trying to be respectful of your guys's time. It was a really hard time. I think most entrepreneurs at that point would have probably quit. And you know what? I still wonder if that was the better thing to do, the smarter business decision right. to do. Well, um, there's a business decision and then there's the emotional decision. Exactly. Right? And to be honest with you, knowing that it's very little, the business one probably would have been, if you really looked at it analytically and as a business, you probably would have made the decision, you know, it's really, it's dicey, right? But your emotions take over, thank God, because you're, again, it's, it's all good, but it's hard, right? Oh, hard place yeah, to be. No, when you're running out of money, that's when you should have phoned uh, your Croatian brother, Robert there and said, Hey, <laughs> remember me? He's got I, cash money. I was really um, disheartened because the people that I was meeting to invest in, in, in better with. And um, I'm trying to be super polite and appropriate because I'm talking to two white men, essentially. They were like, how has your husband helped you in this? And I was like, what do you, what do you mean my husband? And they were like, well, like you couldn't have gotten here without him. A and I was like, my husband had nothing had to do with my first business. He had absolutely nothing. So it doesn't really matter. Why? Why, why do I need my husband to do uh, to do? This I, I we don't. Yeah. We don't see gender on this podcast. The only thing we see is talent. I so see a lot of there's that. no so and there's no so there's no insult taken, right? Like we, no. we know the stereotypes no. are there and they're bullshit. Yeah. Right. Like not. you you did that, not somebody else, right? You you built that cupcake business. You built the ice cream business, not somebody it. else. Yeah, I was really, I was really surprised. They were like, "You couldn't have gotten here." Like, oh, on that's your a own. big crock of shit. I don't understand that. That's mentality, a big crock though. of shit. It's such a like, what the? I was so shocked that I literally remember pulling over in my car so I could really focus on what I was going to say next, because I couldn't believe. Yeah, because that's these... a load of shit. Like, what? What is yeah. that? Like, just, why do people have to be like that? Right? Like, just. You've got a talented person in front of you. It doesn't matter what color they are. It doesn't matter what gender they are. Yeah. Just like get past it. As long as you've already. got the sense to do the business. I mean, quite frankly, who cares? Yeah. So, I mean, the green I, from Mars. I, oh, well, th thankfully, because of cupcakes, I was, you know, I was really 
I definitely had confidence and belief in myself. And My so, so when I moved, when I moved back home and I literally could not raise a dollar, you know, my dad just, I'll never forget. And if I can get through this without crying, that'll be so amazing. But I remember the walk where we walked the farm and he just was like, the farm's got you. Like they knew me, they understood. Yeah, they what they I knew their doing. daughter, right? And they, they yeah. get it. And at that point, you know, you can back, you, you, it's hard to back straight passion because passion can get you into a lot of trouble and can bankrupt you. But if you get it, like you, you did, you had some business sense. You were, you were understanding the game. Like you're learning it, but you're understanding it. It's a lot easier to back. And parents are parents, man. That's, that's, you know, what are you going to do for your kids if they need help? Oh, of course. Well, that's what you do, right? I mean, we're, we're close, right? I'm, I'm really, really close with my parents. That's awesome. What a great story. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah. that's why I didn't quit. <clears throat> At that I, point, I, shit, I mean, you got, you got pop on side. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think That's that wicked. was the reason why I was like, you know, so this farm wow. that I grew up, um, you know, which obviously had increased in value. And my dad was like, the farm's got your back. What do you need? And, um, and that, so when that happened, that's when I realized, okay, I can't do the traceable anymore because I really need to focus on building this business with a right. better, stronger margin. So in the future, we can go back to single source once we scale. And so I stripped that, I changed co-packers. I really like just focused on um, not compromising on the product, but making sure I would build it to a point where my gross margin would be attractive Good for, for investors. And, for um, and for from that moment to this day, we're back to where we were in year one. So we've, you know, we've grown exponentially. And, you know, the thing that's been so amazing is, you know, I was, as I told you, I was not excited and I was not proud to move back home. But when the pandemic started and, you know, me with my science degree, the only one in the family that went to university and I was making bets with my dad because I was like, oh, when the vaccines come, this is all over. I was stranded on a five acre organic farm with my parents and it became the biggest gift of my life. Yeah. That's not I mean, terrible. <laughs> it's it really was, not terrible. It was, but it wasn't, it wasn't about the pandemic and being stuck on this farm where we could very comfortably live off the land. It was the wisdom that I was gaining from my dad. Right. For sure. Like my dad, yeah. I just was so impressed by him. Like, what he was teaching me every day on what, why we were really going through the pandemic um, and his, you know, interpretation of that. I stopped making bets with him after like losing the fourth one because he won every single time. He's still, he's still winning today. Um, but it completely built this amazing bond where I was like, where have I been these last 25 years? I lost 25 years connecting with my parents like this you know what, my parents are really fucking cool. And here I was living in Vancouver in the city thinking I was cooler. Yeah. But meanwhile, they're the cool ones. Yeah. You know, so we've got this pandemic, they're living this life. And for the first time, because they've been doing this my entire life, for the first time, they were getting validated. So yeah. the pandemic really validated farmers. It really validated supporting local, understanding where our food was coming from, right. how it was growing, where it was growing. And that was what I was getting back living at the farm. And that was worth everything. You know, like, so now, like the demos I just did on the weekend, my dad's with me at the demos, right? Like, oh, that's amazing. Right there. How cool is that? So, so yeah, we've got this that's like very cool. amazing, you know, what I would a great story have... though. Like, see what a, what a cool thing to take that. That's just cool to get out. Like that, that's, that's pretty. That's, that's what I'm really most proud cool. of. That's, you know, that's what I'm most proud of is I'm like, this is not about the ice cream. No, this is about understanding what makes better food, how we can do it. You know, we should see my dad's hands, right? Like from being in the soil for the last, for his All entire his life. life. And I'm like, God, dad, you're the coolest guy I know. And, yeah. and I've just learned so much. I've learned way beyond CPG. So it's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Good for you. Wow. Seriously, that's pretty cool. Like that's, that is really that's cool. pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. wow. 
So I don't, you know, I can't sit here and tell you what's going to happen with Better With Ice Cream because I'm still in the same position where I literally am scraping by and really limited on cash because, you know, it's so hard to, it's so hard to get. But I'm really enjoying this, right? I'm enjoying this. I'm doing what I can. I'm loving this time that I've gotten back with my parents. And I'm becoming so much, you know, as a person, so much more appreciative. And so the ice cream company and the growth is part of it, but it's not all of it. And that's really what's helped me with this. Wow. Good for you. Wow. Thank you for coming on. That's Good a great you. story. You still need to phone Robert. <clears throat> yeah. I really would. I'm t- you laugh. I'm telling you, I would phone. Because you know um, what? I Came don't from that- have his card anymore. Oh, it's not so- hard to find, my dear. You, you can definitely find that one. Like Let's that, go and that find one, him that on LinkedIn. You can reach out and you tell him, yeah. you know what? He would be one of those guys because he would get it. You know why? He came from that. Oh, and yeah. even when you watch him, he's not one of those venture capitals assholes. He's not. You can tell. He's still grounded in old school ways of doing shit. I would, I'm dead serious. I would call him a hundred to one. He remembers you. And, and you know, what's a couple pennies to those guys? Even if he had to give him whatever, figure it out. Even if it's a loan, I mean, I'm sure he would be, uh, those are the type of people I would go to in a heartbeat. I'm dead serious. It's a phone call. What's it cost I, you? I haven't done it, but I will do it because- What's it cost you? You know, phone, you start talking Croatia, he's going to laugh his guts out. You'll be all over it. Probably be Victoria the next day having dinner with your mom and dad. <laughs> well, you guys are invited. <laughs> oh, I'm coming. Trust me. I'm all good with that. You guys, you guys better come. <clears throat> that would be uh, awesome. I, um, yeah, it's pretty special here. You know, it's so. Where are you exactly on the island? No, you don't so know right this up... addresses. We don't want you know, people, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stalking you. No one's coming <laughs> to my house. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Definitely not your house either, Kenny. We're good. No. No. <laughs> no. Right on the backside of Elk Lake. So Elk Lake is the lake right along the highway when you're right. driving from the ferry right um, mm. way to downtown. So we're when you're on the highway looking at Elk Lake. Right on the backside of okay. our farm, and okay, it goes cool. down to the lake. Very cool, beautiful, yeah. Very cool. But wow. I mean, you get, you need to come when it's fig season because we've got. Oh, like, you got fresh figs? Oh, you have no idea. Oh, yeah. that'll, that'll be our heartbeat. Ever had. I love. Figs. Oh, I love figs. Right you off too, the tree. Though? Yeah, I love figs. Oh, I'm gonna send you guys some. Right off the tree, skin and all, everything yeah, goes. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah, it's yeah. all organic here, so. Hey, whatever. Even if it's not, I'm not even washing them. They come off the tree. It's <laughs> yeah. Good enough. Move on. Okay, well, you're you guys anytime, but I'm oh gonna God. send you. I, I need your numbers so I can send you some pictures because it is like, I, I mean, I probably eat, eat, like I'm not exaggerating, like 15 figs a day. It's my it's my food in those weeks. You know when I first oh got my, my taste for it? Well, we we were the first time we went to Italy when we were, <clears throat> I was seven and my brother was four, and it was either Luca or Mario because I remember the names. I don't I don't know these people now, right? We climbed the tree and was tossing them to us. Yeah. And we're yeah. biting into these things thinking, holy shit, this is like crunchy and soft and you eat everything. Yeah. Ate a little too many, paid the price for that. You know, uh, yeah. kids, yeah. nobody was too happy in the house. No, 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 we're thrilled. My mom and dad weren't thrilled. That's all good. But you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, I love figs. Love you figs. Can't, you can't describe the experience of a fig. Love figs. Yeah. it's With it's nothing else. Like... Don't eat cheese, don't eat wine, yeah. just figs. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, no, these are like, these are those figs. My father-in-law had a fig because a lot of, you know, the Portuguese and Italians in town all have, actually with the Croats too, all, all have the fig trees. Of course they do. Right. But, so my father-in-law, when he was alive, he said fig tree. We still, I loved him. It was, I mean, you can't, you can't beat it. So beat I, it. my, my friend that gave me my first fresh fig was Croatian. And then I got in, I got in big shit when I took them home. Like he gave me five figs, right? One for each person in my family. And I had them at his house, loved it brought them home so i i i thought it was cool so i was like look you can just eat the whole thing you don't gotta peel and they're like what's the matter with you do you know what those are i'm like i know what these are i've just had like four of them (laughs) and they're like ah you gotta skin them i was like you don't skin it why oh (laughs) you know so after that i was like he's like oh you want more figs i'm like no i'm just gonna come to your house and eat them at your house (laughs) It's too much drama in my house. I like forget I, it. You know, like they're wasted there. I, so yeah. The, the comment that I made earlier about 
my parents being validated, farmers being validated for the first time. Yeah. So there was a, there's a local magazine in town, a food magazine. And I was flipping through Instagram. This is like summer of probably 2020. And there was this, they, the full cover shot was this box of figs with, with, with these hands holding the box. And I was like, that's my dad. Like, I just know my dad. Oh, no way. That's funny. That's hilarious. And so, and so that's, that's where I was going with that. You know, it's the first time ever that they were getting recognition because when I grew up, we had the figs. Mm -hmm. Do you know how much work it took to convince people to try a fig? Mm. Never mind buy it, like pay for it. Mm. You know, my parents raised, so, you know, now that my dad comes with me to do these demos, it's role reversal because when I was growing up, I was watching him hustle, right? With his accent and trying to sell. He had to give away half of the fruit. Yeah, just yeah. To convince people to try yeah, it. Yeah, just to try it. Better. Yeah. And now, um, you know, he's, you know, my my ice cream runner getting getting ice That's cream awesome, pints for man. customers. So yeah, That's it's awesome. pretty cool. That's amazing. We're just, I'm just trying to make it fun, right? Like let's yeah. let's let's be proud of what we're what we're making you know, appreciate what it takes, but also we need to have fun. Like, or else why are we doing this? Well, especially with food. I mean, yep. food is, exactly. that's the whole point of it. Yeah. So, okay. So your task is phone Robert, okay. get some cash, find the single source dairy. We're going to go nine ninety nine or ten ninety nine on that. So the margins are there. Fuck the seven ninety nine bullshit. going to do it properly. And we're going to make some coin. And uh, people will pay. You know why? Because you're going to teach them about this traceable thing. And people are a lot smarter than me and probably know more than I do. So they'll be ready to go with it. Keep the distribution tight, light it up. Once, once we have the ability to properly communicate and educate the consumer as to where that difference is, then you can definitely charge for that. The Whole Foods customer got it. Like I but did that's so where, But many that's demos. where you stay. You stay, yeah. with, you stay with those guys because the Whole Food customer will get it. You have a lot of places on the island. You may not have 150 stores. Yeah but you need 25 good ones and you got yeah. those on the island and they're in yeah. the city too. They're here. You oh, just got to they- limit your distribution, make it special, small runs. You're going to pay more, whatever, yeah. charge yeah. more. Yeah. People will pay. Not everybody. I get it, but that's, this isn't for everybody anyway. No, no, but yeah. And I was going to say it's, it's not for everybody. It's, no, it's, it's for people who point. appreciate it. You really, you really right? got to love it. And, and then you got to love the story yeah. and the whole yeah thing yeah. about it that's what this exactly. is but once you buy it you're gonna buy it you're gonna and that's it game. right and you're gonna keep buying it Listen, and i think that's what kenny's after right because 100%. then you now you're putting stuff back in your pocket and then and then what'll happen is you'll find other people that'll buy it right like you'll find mm-hmm. your cachet it might always be small but so yeah. what? it doesn't really matter nothing exactly. wrong with boutique yeah. and join it and stay into your your values yeah. and what yeah. you believe and do the right thing for what you believe is the right thing i mean God bless yeah. it, man. Go. Very cool. That's my I'm friend. glad we got you on. Yay. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you came on. I really did. I'm really happy yeah. you came on. Yeah. Thanks, you all. Just, um, this was if fun. people want to find you, where do they find you? How do they find you? Betterwith.com. Um, and if they email me, it goes straight, straight to me. Um, LinkedIn. I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm everywhere. Come on, you guys. I am not hiding. I'll give you my phone number if you want. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, no phone numbers. No, no phone am, numbers. But I, not here. That's LinkedIn. Fine. We'll put we'll put uh, Lori's LinkedIn contacts Absolutely. in the in the website. And then I'm uh, sharing the the purpose, and um, I just really hope that I can you know through this podcast and through what I'm doing, you know, inspire other better food products to be made. Yeah, we think so. I, th- I think you will. This is how you start. Yeah. This is how yeah. we all start. This is our how we start helping people too. Yeah. Exactly. We help ourselves. Like Phil and I've learned a lot in the last year yeah. and a half, two years with the amount of guests we've had on, you know, yeah. change how we do things, change how we look at things. Yeah, well, really and, and, and you know what, it's actually one of the reasons why it's been so easy to stay in this business because I really like the people. There's, There's a lot of good people. Really I tell people, people all the time, yeah. you leave this industry. What are you going to do? Yeah. You go I know. to see a chip. You saw there's, it's a good industry. There's really yeah. nice people in this industry. Like there's good people. Yep. With good and, intention. Yeah. And most of them give a shit. They really do. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, awesome. Good for you. Awesome. You Thanks, Lori. Nice to have on. Thank you. Really yeah. appreciate it. Oh, this is fun. I can't wait for you guys to try my strawberry ice cream. Well, I'm going to Whole Foods now. It's easy. I mean, Me I, I can't go tonight because we ran this a little late, but that's okay. 
<laughs> Tomorrow. I, I, I'm going to bring it to you. Hey, when, you're, when you come to town, when you go see uh, when you go see Vargas, they're not far from me. Okay, great. Like there's just you know five minutes away, so I'll just meet you there if you want. Yeah. We'll meet you. We'll see if Mike will go. We'll have an ice cream together. Awesome, that would be fun. Well, yes, you got us, Mike. I mean, Mike and I want may not want to see me. Who knows? But you know, God. If you see Joyce in the office, Joyce will go. Okay, great. <laughs> okay. All you have to do. Thanks, is sorry. Ask. That man, Lori. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Guys. This is fun. Phil, stick around for a bit, yep. and then uh, that's it. Lori, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay. Bye, we'll Lori. Give your dad Take a hug. Guys. We'll give your mom a hug, too. Yeah. I will. Awesome. Ciao. Bye. Bye. Well, Mr. Chang? Well, that was pretty awesome. I want her yeah. ice cream now. I can't get it. Not yet. No, I can, though. Yeah. So I think tomorrow... I think tomorrow, on the way home from... I'm at Jeeva tomorrow. Maybe on the way home from Jeeva, I'll stop at Choices. I'll stop at the Choices up on the, on Marine Drive. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She said Choices, right? Yep. I'll stop at the Choices on Marine Drive on the way home. Yeah, fuck. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. I love ice cream. I, I really do. Man. She's so just, funny. She won a Gemini, which is a big deal. You think? And it, it just kind of like wandered into the conversation somewhere. No, it's cool though, babe. but her whole story is cool. And the thing yeah. with her folks is really cool. I yeah. really think she should phone uh, Robert. I really do. You know, she phones think... him up just starts talking Croatian as a joke, like the fun that she had with him that night. You know what? Those those guys look for people like that. But you know what? She, I think she needs to do. I think you're right. Is I think she needs to just. It's the messiness of the profit margins. So she just needs to get that cleaned up. And then yeah. if she goes to Richard, it'll make a lot of sense. You do you know, know what but, I mean? It's kind of like the final bit. You know, you it can be, but a, a, someone like, like a Robert or those guys have enough contacts and have enough business sense that they may be able to find other places where she can pull a few pennies and, and help out. Right. Yep. Or, yep. B, the, 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 the funds that helps her get to the single source and that $9.99, $10.99, yeah. where you can start to charge appropriately. I understand you're not going to sell the same amount as Hagen does two for eights. I get it. I'm not stupid. I, get, I understand that. Who cares? But you're also not Unilever. Exactly. You don't want to be Nestle or Unilever. You're, you're not. Do I, I think Hagen does is now, I thought Nestle. Hagen does is Unilever. Or, no, or... Is Unilever, right? I Hagen does think... is Nestle. I'm almost positive it's Nestle. I think it was. I thought. And that Briars owns both. I mean, a Unilever owns Briars and, and Hagen does that. I thought you, Unilever like bought out a whole bunch of these things. Briars for sure. I don't know if they did Ben and Jerry's. I don't know. Oh, no, you're ones. right. It's Nestle. Yeah, I'm, I'm positive it was Nestle. So, I mean, you got two massive. I mean, Nestle owns everything on the planet. I mean, they're in everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And it is yeah. a good ice cream. I get it. But. This is local. We need to support this shit. Not, not Nestle's got more money than God. They can figure it out. Support people like this. I... Anyway, that's eight fifteen, baby. We've lost yeah. everybody by now. We have definitely lost everybody by now. Yeah, that's okay. Um, okay, for, awesome. For Linda, who's probably still there. Thanks, boss, for sticking around. You're, yeah, you're thanks, boss. Um, thanks, and boss. then I guess uh, that's it. Thanks for listening, everybody, and we'll uh, okay. chat with you later.